Tunisia's president says African migrants pose a threat to the country's Arab identity. The African Union has condemned the comments as hate speech. But how are Europe-bound asylum seekers treated in North African countries? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Nick Clark. So Tunisia's president, Kai Saeed, is under fire once again after he made comments about African migrants. He said there's a plot to replace Tunisia's Arab and Islamic identity by bringing people from other countries in the region. Uh, many have strongly condemned the comments as racist and xenophobic. Hundreds of people protested in the capital Tunis to denounce discrimination and express solidarity with the migrants. Opponents say the comments are a distraction from a worsening economy and growing government crackdown against critics. The African Union says the president's statement amounts to racialized hate speech. Thousands of African migrants travel through Tunisia on their way to attempt the dangerous crossing to Europe. The hate speech, the call to violence, the call to hatred against our sub-Saharan brothers and sisters does not represent Tunisia, does not represent Tunisians. It's a shame. It's true that we all have suffered, but we will not give up. We will go all the way to rebuild Tunisia's reputation, a Tunisia known as a welcoming land and not a racist one. I told them clearly that if we have castrated their voices, there are a thousand voices that rise to demand rights. Today I came to the demonstration to say no to racism and fascism and to say that Tunisia is an African country and land and that all Africans are welcome. Well, the president made the controversial remarks on Thursday. Here's some of what he had to say. To all leaders at every level, look after our brothers from sub-Saharan Africa who are in a legal situation. This is a matter of state. It must take its responsibilities. There is no question of allowing anyone in any illegal situation to stay in Tunisia. There is a state and institutions. It is a file prepared with the objective of changing the demographic makeup of Tunisia. By the end of this year, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees estimates nearly half a million asylum seekers will pass through North Africa. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia and Libya are the preferred routes for human trafficking networks to get people towards Europe. Thousands are believed to have died in the dangerous crossing of the Mediterranean Sea. To discourage this, Morocco has become the first country in the region to give legal status and benefits to migrants. All right, let's bring in our guests. In Strasbourg, we have Amin Tsnusi, he's a Tunisia and North Africa specialist, and Rabat Safa Kasrawi, who's chief of staff at the Morocco World News. A warm welcome to both of you to the programme. Uh, Safa, if I could start with you. So, I'm just curious, when the president says this is all a conspiracy and the goal is to change the, the demographic makeup of Tunisia, whose goal is he saying that is exactly? Uh, thank you. The hostile statement that came from the president of Tunisia, who is the head of state of an African country, brought up the urgency or how it's urgent to tackle irregular migration as a humanitarian and not a political issue. The racist comments prompted backlash across the world, particularly Africa, even in Tunisia. A lot of people in Tunisia reacted to his hateful. You just mentioned that there were protests there to um, condemn his hateful statements. And um, um, people are protesting there. To answer your question, North Africa is part of Africa. We have diverse mixed marriages, roots and colors that make our identity. Africa is our identity. Uh, it's also part of Morocco's constitution. Exactly. But, it's, but who, so who do you think he is referring to? I mean, who, who is he saying is behind this, as he puts it, conspiracy? I, I, I think, um, I mean, his statements were really vague, but I think what he's meant, he meant he's, he's targeting sub-Saharan migrants. He's targeting people who are making, you know, our identity. They are part of our identity. I mean, what do you think? Uh, Said called it a, a criminal arrangement made since the beginning of the century to alter the demographic uh, structure of Tunisia. 
So what, what's his tactic here, do you think? Well, it's the same tactic as he always used. No, just like we, we've heard now, um, it's vague statements, um, always accusing people of plotting against the state, against Tunisia, always accusing people of conspiracies without naming anything. Um, so really, he did that. He did that with his political opponents by persecute the, persecuting them for plotting against the state without saying what's the plot or what's the conspiracy or without proofing, proving um, if that's true or not. He said that about shortages and food shortages, and he said food, food shortages, and he said that there was a conspiracy among business businessmen and women in Tunisia that that are plotting against uh, against the state. So really. Um, he's he's been doing and building conspiracy theories for the last two years. So this comes, this does not come as a as a shocking statement when you know Qaisaid's project. He always justify his acts by um, fighting against a dark conspiracy um, without naming who's behind it. Yeah, he says there are parties who received huge sums of money after 2011 to settle irregular migrants in Tunisia. Again, who does he mean, or is he just making it up? Well, he's, he's, um, if you if you ask me, I think he's making it up. Mm. But um, but I think he's uh, accusing all political parties because Saïd's project is to build a political system without political parties. That's why he got rid of the parliament. That's why he got rid of the old constitution. Um, his main project is to build an individual system uh, based on himself. So he cannot have political parties being popular in Tunisia. He needs to destroy the reputation, and that's what he's doing by accusing them of being involved in human trafficking or uh, this, uh, this, this uh, or, or this issue. So it's really the same strategy he's been using since his coup in 2021. So what, what do you think, Safar, uh, within Tunisia about how people perceive this? And let's start with those who support President Saeed in the first place. Would they be, some of those be surprised by what he said here? Uh, absolutely. Like the his statements, like created controversy not only in Tunisia. As I said, uh, everyone like was shocked of what he said. Um, I think I agree with Amin with what he said regarding his policy. He's, I mean, ruining Tunisia. He's ruining um, everything w that was built to uh, help reforming the country to go out from the crisis and conflict uh, that created division uh, among Tunisia. Tunisians themselves, and the the evidence of that is the um, recent tension between Tunisia and Morocco. You saw how um, he, um, I mean, Morocco recalled its ambassador from Tunisia re uh, in response to uh, the the Tunisian president hosting uh, Polisario leader Ibrahim Ghali. So I think he's just like acting from uh, out of the blue, like. Uh, introducing policy that is acting against Tunisia development. Because he, he does have a lot of support in Tunisia, that is a fact. And won't there, there are those who have been campaigning in recent weeks for authorities to expel undocumented migrants from the country. So, so what I'm asking is, is those sort of steadfast supporters, do they still, will they still stand by him? Absolutely not. I'm sure that they are against what he said. And uh, I mean, whatever you go, there are people that support, um, you know, their head of state and those that are against. But I, 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 I have a strong belief that those people who are supporting him would disagree 100 percent about what he said. We are in Africa again. It's part of our identity. And I don't see anybody like thinking to agree with a hostile statement and hateful statement and remarks full of hatred and would incite hatred actually among our um, society. I mean, would you agree with that? Because to disagree with the president would give uh, power to the opposition, wouldn't it? Splintered as it is. Um, I think um, I think we need to uh, establish uh, how popular side is. Mm -hmm. um, um, I've, we've seen too in the two last elections that Syed um, has still uh, a base of people that support him, but the majority of Tunisian people did not go to vote, so they are not. Uh, approving this political project that Said is building. So when it comes to that, I think that 
his solid uh, support comes from a group of people that have been campaigning for his election uh, in 2019, etc., etc., and that are approving his project. Those specific people, I think, are supporting what Tide is doing right now because they he gave them a, sh- a populistic answer to a complex problem. He made sub-Saharan migrants the scapegoats for the economical issues in Tunisia. Um, so right now what we are having in Tunisia is multiple uh, acts of violence against sub-Saharan migrants. We've seen it yesterday in the city of Fax where they've tried to, they, um, people tried to um, physically abuse a, uh, a sub-Saharan uh, family. Uh, we've seen it two days ago in the city of Sukra where they tried to burn down uh, a house where uh, sub-Saharan uh, migrants were uh, living. So uh, really, we are seeing acts of violence against migrants in Tunisia because people, desperate people, are believing that um, those migrants are responsible for the economical issues. And that's what I made them believe. So really, I think that um, there is a group of people in Tunisia, um, his strong support, uh, that can believe anything that I tells them because he he built all the political system around him and he's not only um, he's not only their uh, their political choice he's their only choice right now they cannot they cannot think of anything else besides Saeed's project but for the opposition and for the the people that left Saeed after his multiple uh, abuses of power after the coup. This is a, this is a strong um, uh, this is a strong disbelief for them. They, they did not expect Said to be um, this uh, this filled with hatred, with um, with populistic um, uh, words against uh, against people. So 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 really, I think um, he still have his strong base. But I mm-hmm. think most of the people that believed in him are now filled with disappointment. Did you think this tactic? Uh, I mean, will work uh, th- this effort to, you know, to create this smokescreen around the problems, the political problems, the economic problems, the food supply issues, and so forth. Uh, it could work, but until when? Mm-hmm. I mean, people will will uh, people will realize that uh, that uh, side economical policies are simply not working, are simply not there. He cannot. Uh, cr- he cannot get a deal with IMF. He cannot get uh, foreign aid. He cannot build uh, econom- uh, economical uh, programs that uh, that that reduce inequalities, that uh, uh, create more uh, more companies, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He did not uh, present really any economical uh, project that could help people. So really, um, I think it could work for a time, just as his old tactics worked for a time. The parliament, the justice, etc. It was all. Um, for a few months, and then you find a new scapegoat. But who will you blame next? Who will be the next victims? That's the 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 main question and the sad question, really. Safa, the African Union has expressed shock and deep concern. Should they? Could they do more? I think yes. I think um, rather than just condemning, because I mean, even not like let's talk about not only the EU, the the AU, but also the EU. The EU and like AU mm-hmm. have been like um, uh, condemning similar acts, similar actions, like repeatedly uh, adopting resolutions to condemn this and condemn that. But are we seeing any changes really? I don't think so. A lot of challenges are still hampering, uh, you know, or, or or affecting migrants across the world, across the continent. So I'm not really seeing like any changes, like helping to overcome such challenges. If you take into account the situation in EU and the European Union or European countries, there are a lot of dysfunctions and a lot of loopholes and a lot of issues targeting migrants. But are they solved? We only see like resolutions adopted and um, you know uh, that are condemning African countries from for, for for not doing enough to tackle the situation. But are they doing anything to tackle the situation? Um, I only see resolutions and you know targeting some countries in Africa. But whether the uh, giant economies in the EU are doing or shouldering their responsibilities and that issue. I don't see any actions. Uh, let's take into account France, uh, the situation in France. I see local officials uh, repeatedly 
uh, targeting migrants uh, from Morocco, from Algeria, from the sub saharan and from across the region uh, or from across uh, Africa's regions. Um, but are they held accountable? Are there any actions taken against those officials that are throwing uh, hostile statements about uh, against African uh, migrants? Uh, there was a local uh, official in Montpellier, I think France, uh, rec who recently said that Moroccans and Africans are not welcomed in uh, in the European or in France. Are, are did France take any legal action against what he said? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. So I think, yes, there are still some, um, some. I mean, a lot to do in order to tackle the situation of migrants uh, across the world. Of course. I, I mean, you could indeed argue that it's more of a European Union problem than an African problem. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. can you um, repeat that? I mean, carry on. Yeah, um, I was, I was, um, I was, I was actually questioning uh, why do we, why do we give responsibility to the uh, um, Maghreb countries and the uh, North African countries to tackle the situation? I mean, we are not supposed to be the pol the uh, the police of uh, of the European Union. Um, they need to handle their uh, migration policy and held accountable once there is ab abuse. Um, I don't like when uh, European countries get involved in uh, in North African countries to 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 um, to, uh, to deal with migration issues. I mean, um, since I uh, since I uh, presidential term began uh, in Tunisia, we have we have we have we've been working with France to expel people Tunisian people from France, people who never lived in Tunisia, who were just uh, who were just who were there who were there for 20 or 30 years, and they, they've been. Uh, They've been expelled from from France after one minor uh, uh, one uh, minor infraction or uh, or uh, because their uh, their visa permit expired, etc. Before that, we used to always refuse. We used to always uh, uh, give those people the chance to uh, get back uh, into get back into um, uh, into in a legal situation, etc. And etc. Now we are just dealing with. Uh, with uh, France and the uh, European uh, migration policy. We are doing it for them. Uh, and Safa, so let, let's get down to the, the nitty-gritty of the, the migrant story, if you like. So you have the, the migrants coming from these countries. They end up in North Africa in their bid to get to the, you know, the, the streets paved with gold in Europe, as, as they may think they are. And then what happens? Why are they trapped there? If I can, if I may only like uh, add up to what Amin is saying, uh, for instance, just recently in 2021, France uh, decided to slash the number of visas to Moroccan and Algerians and also uh, Tunisian migrants. There was no no condemnation about this from the EU itself. I mean, um, there was no no actual statement. And France claimed that it, it solved this issue, but did did it do it? Because I, I still report, as a journalist, I still write about this continuously, writing about how Moroccans are frustrated about like how their applications get denied um, without any specific justification. France claimed that it solved the issue and uh, the consular services were restored fully restored, which are still claims. All right. And Safa, so on the other hand, Morocco itself uh, has become the first country in the region to give legal status and benefits to migrants. How is that working? OK, so this is part of Morocco's migratory policy that King Mohammed VI uh, launched in 2013. And this enabled the opening of Moroccan Office for Asylum and Stateless Persons. And uh, this gave migrant children access to public education, as well as the integration of migrants into Morocco's society. Um, Morocco is one of the first Africans to have such a migration policy. And that goes beyond regularizing the status of migrants. Uh, I think that um, the number of migrants that um, you know benefited from this policy goes beyond 50,000 of migrants uh, uh, as part of two campaigns that were launched under the Moroccan migration policy.
And then when they're granted this, do they settle and given opportunities for work and so forth? How, how are they assimilated Absolutely. into the community? Absolutely. They get a, a, a residential permit that would allow them to get access to education, health care, and also have the right to uh, apply for jobs. Um, in addition to that, uh, Morocco also grants uh, thousands of scholarships. We have like a 12,000, I think, uh, students uh, uh, studying in Morocco, including students from sub-Saharan Africa, and eventually they get job opportunities either here or uh, when they are back to their home countries. Uh, in addition to that, we all uh, saw or we all witnessed Morocco's initiatives and um, commitment towards the African development, and uh, the best evidence to prove that is um, uh, Morocco's uh, contribution to uh, food security in the continent. Uh, the country donated thousands of fertilizers to uh, several uh, smallholder farmers across the continent. So I think uh, the country is doing a great job. Of course, um, there are there's still some challenges that Morocco should take into account, including communication. Um, but I think uh, we're doing so far uh, so good. Right, and I mean that differs massively from how migrants are received in Tunisia. Tell us a little bit about that. What's it like for migrants and their families who enter the country? Yeah, um, just to react to what Safa said about um, about um, the uh, the French policy uh, when it comes to visa, I, uh, it was a part of um, an international negotiation between uh, France and uh, the Maghreb. Uh, France wanted to expel their uh, the citizens uh, from uh, Maghreb citizens in France that were uh, not legal anymore. And uh, for the last 10 years, uh, Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia always refused. Tunisia accepted uh, two years ago, and that's what um, made the French uh, minister Bruno Le Maire say that Tunisia um, is the good student of the Maghreb when it comes to when it comes to uh, migration policies because we accept that French expels people that are living there, that have built their families, that have built families there, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So really, uh, all our migration policy um, is uh, is badly thinked. It's not thinked in human in a humanitarian way. Uh, it's thinked in terms of politics. How can we benefit from it? And um, now the situation is absolutely horrifying for migrants. Uh, I've been saying that the worst now in Tunisia is to be either black, either an opponent of, uh, of Syed, and God forbid you're both. Um, and um, really, um, they've always, there's, they, they always have, there always have been racism in Tunisia. Of course, there's racism everywhere. But now, since Syed's communication, it, it has become difficult for them to go to the doctor. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the medicine university had to put out a statement to, to, to tell the doctors you are supposed to treat everyone equally and um, there is even difficulties to get into uh, private private transportations because we've seen pictures yesterday of private private transports uh, saying uh, uh, they will not welcome any uh, any african migrants we are african and they 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 just uh, they just seem to forget that Mm -hmm. uh, Safa, migrants across the continent. Yeah, sorry, just one, Go ahead. one comment to react to I mean, what I mean said. Uh, I think, um, um, like the statement you said, you mentioned about like Morocco, Algeria, and I mean, I'll, I'll talk about Morocco specifically since it's a uh, part of yeah. my, uh, my 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 expertise. Um, this what you said is part of uh, Tunisia, and uh, sorry, what what France said. It's a version of the French government claiming that Morocco refused to to uh, get back uh, its its uh, migrants who are residing in France irregularly. But Morocco, like, has been renewing its commitment towards uh, bringing ban back uh, migrants um, uh, to, who are like um, residing in France irregularly. But of course, this will take a lot of process, a lot of uh, security back check, and and a lot of things. Uh, it's not just as easy as that not like as easy as it seems uh, and of course i mean france uh, um didn't justify its decision they just like uh, how i mean how it's 
uh, how is visa related to uh, um, not Morocco not being able to to repatriate or uh, depo bring back its irregular migrants in France? I don't see like um, there is a connection between this because those who are you know applying for visa are applying legally through okay. uh, legal Safa, channels. I'm going to jump in there because we're just running out of time. I, so, I mean, I just want to come to you on the this this idea that the migrants across the continent facing so much hostility that many are calling for this kind of no borders policy that uh, nobody no african should be regarded as a foreigner anywhere on the continent is that a possibility is that a good idea i'd love that i agree with that i think that borders are just human constructs political constructs and that um, um, a no border policy would mean that um, uh, we will have a, a mixed country where uh, the, the risk of uh, xenophobia uh, would be would uh, would be lower and would be uh, would be would be impossible really. Um, so I think that's that's the a thing that we could we could we could get something from Europe on that and uh, and uh, try to build um, an, an African country without borders, without need for permits or visa or visas. Safa, could it work uh, like a large part of Europe? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I definitely agree with that. I would see, uh, I would love to see some initiatives that would allow Africans to move freely. And again, uh, we need to tackle this as a humanitarian issue and not a political issue. And I mean, finally to you, we've seen all too clearly the tragedy of migration. Even today, this shipwrecked vessel in Italy, dozens dead. Ultimately, where is the solution? Is the solution where they end up or, or where they're trying to get to or where they're coming from? I think we could learn a thing or two uh, from Morocco. I think we could uh, we could welcome people uh, that are that are here in, that are here that uh, in Tunisia and that are uh, searching for a better life, and we could offer them this better life. We have um, uh, um, we have been trying to attract uh, migration to private universities and to and to uh, live in Tunisia for years now. There was a policy really to to bring uh, African people, uh, sub-Saharan African people to, um, and to private universities. And I think that uh, we, could, we could benefit from that. We could benefit really from giving work, work permits and uh, jobs to, to the people that are here. And I think that the, the, the hopes that uh, they are, uh, the hopes of a better life they are expecting from Europe, we could offer them here. Yeah, a challenging, ongoing problem. Uh, we've run out of time. Appreciate your thoughts and your perspectives. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks to our guests, Amin Snusi and Safa thank Kasrawi. Thanks very much indeed. And thank you too for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, just go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Nick Clark, and the entire team here in Doha, it's goodbye for now.